Hello, hello, yogis. Namaste. Namaste, loosely translated meaning the divine in me acknowledges the divine in you. And when we are both in that part of our being, we are as one. In other words, what creates separateness, otherness is all the ways that we're human and challenging and so on that we'll continue to work on for the rest of our lives. But that there is a part in each of us that is that just, I actually think of it as a quiet space uh, when I think of the divine, that it's calm, quiet, abiding, if you will, and that we each have a space in us that is that. And so we greet that in each other. I salute that in you. I hope you are finding literal quiet spaces in nature, in moments with loved ones, uh, in your breath. And so we're going to actually be doing uh, breath locks today. Um, really one of my favorite pranayama or breath practices uh, because it does provide that opportunity for a, like a still point, which I really appreciate. Our regular breathing does too, ideally, but it's not as obvious, I think. And a lot of times our daily or regular breath can be kind of rushed and pushed along. And in breath locks or um, our external and internal kapalabhat or um, kumbhaka, I got the word for breath locks, um, we find this really obvious pause because there's nothing to do but to listen to it and to notice it. So we're going to be playing with that today. In the meantime, um, I want to ask you to just kind of start warming up and loving up your body, that there's congestion that happens in wrists and fingers, some rolling my wrists, and I'm going to straighten my arms a little bit more. So as I'm rolling my wrists, I'm also getting movement up into the connected tissue around the elbows. And then I'm going to just take one arm and circle it and uh, another arm and circle it. And of course, along the way, you might feel like uh, pushing the earth away, like when you yawn or anything else. Any movement we're doing is bringing some nice synovial fluid to the joints. So again, rolling ankles and you know, it's funny, being sedentary can cause congestion and so can overactivity or repetitive movement. So it's kind of interesting that opposite ends of the spectrum are challenging. And we can do some knee rolling here. Circling, I guess is better put. And then some hip circling. And we're not doing this just to perform the circles or bring in synovial fluid, but also to notice, you know, where am I sticky, congested? Like, oh, okay, there's a spot. Mm. Make sure you switch directions. And then one of my favorite places to attend to and love up is the neck and adding that little neck collar, taking your hands around and then kind of turning the neck or um, I think of it as like a very slow top that you're spinning. And so again, noticing what you're finding there so that as we go into our practice and whatever the rest of your day holds, that you're able to be attentive to muscles and things that are tight, sore, congested, and maybe even give them a little bit more of a love up. So as you're doing that, I'm going to mention, speaking of congestion, um, while this time is so radiantly beautiful, flowering blossoms and so on, I know for me and a lot of people, it can also create congestion in the nose, the lungs, and so on. So we're also going to be doing Nadi Shodana, which is kind of wonderful for bringing us into connection with those challenges. And I wanted to mention the value of Olbas. And that's what it looks like. And they have it at our wonderful Menominee Market here in Menominee. And I know, of course, you can always um, also order it on Amazon and things. It's made in England, and it's just a really wonderful blend of uh, essential oils that help expand your, your breath capacity and kind of restore uh, good breathing when you're dealing with allergies and so on. So I usually just put a couple of drops, I already did it before class, um, on my neck or chest. Very careful to not get it on the skin of the face as that part of us is, is really sensitive and it'll feel kind of just burny, icy hot in a way that's not appealing. I'm going to now take my hands behind my back and just a light little yoga mudra. Oh, pressing the fist down. See what it takes to really get those arms straight. And remember, if you can't grab a sock or a scarf or a belt and something that allows you to engage there. Ah. Marvelous. We're going to start on our back bodies in some breath and then some nice core work, bringing us into, I uh, hope, a really balanced body. So first, coming onto your back body and giving into gravity, taking time 
to you know move around wiggle <laughs> and give back actually let's begin with our sighing breaths gathering a long inhale slow deep and wide is there more <sighs> Again. <sighs> Beginning to direct your attention towards breath. Three points of introversion the internal gaze looking up behind the center of the forehead, the light connection of the tip of the tongue behind the front teeth at the roof of the mouth, and a softening, of course, through the rest of the tongue and jaw. And then adding ujjayi, ocean sounding breath or great sounding breath. I often think of it as wind in the trees sounding breath. Please continue. And as you're beginning to hear that whooshing sound of ujjayi in the body and in your ears, I hope you'll be able to seek the moment of pause that might exist between the active turns of the breath. You can also use that whooshing experience as a kind of wind sweeping the mind or the surface clean. So if you have been feeling like you don't have a lot of receptive space in your mind and all of your thinking, begin to just sweep that surface clean and clear until you feel it can settle like a calm surface of a pond. Notice if the mind wanders, which it will, and simply become more uh, adept, more efficient at calling it back, its attention focusing on breath itself or any other body sensation, uh, whether it's the eyes or a particular feeling in the body, uh, fabric moving against the skin and so on. And so show notice, please, the quality of your breath. Are you breathing pretty shallowly? Do you feel pretty expansive in the lungs? And again, we're going to do some things to try and increase that during our practice. Right now, we're going to come into compression and expansion. So on your next exhale, firmly draw the abdomen towards the spine, firmly anchor the back into the floor, and feel the pelvis tilt up as a result. Emptying, <sighs> emptying, <sighs> until there's nothing left. Soften and allow. Feel the body relax back to its natural spinal curvature. Feel breath rising up and then expand it. Sip in a little extra at the very end of your inhale. And again, exhale and compression. We'll do a few more of these. Please use this time to really talk to and activate the lower abdominal muscles, the muscles around the ribs, all those same areas that we try to wake up during three-part breathing, which uh, we covered last week. All of this muscular and neural awareness really helps restore our natural way of breathing, our bliss breath, how we came into the world as babies before we had any stresses or worries or um, things that made us tighten in ways. So. Babies come in hopefully a little fresh and looser, more open, and the breath therefore is too. So we're going to try and reclaim some of that. One more, emptying, emptying, emptying. Remember, this is a great place to check in with that next skull connection and invite softening. And let the pattern go. 
Notice the effects of compression and expansion. This is one of my favorite things to do, perhaps just first thing in the morning if I'm laying in bed and I'm having a hard time waking up or motivating. We're going to come into seed pose. And so it's this shape with the knees as tight to the belly as we can get. Feet flexed, shoulder heads activated down. You can also bring the elbows in. Neck stays soft. And we're essentially going to try and do compression and expansion breathing here. So exhaling, emptying, emptying, emptying. Inhaling, expanding, expanding. And then to make a true seed, and we'll only do this if it doesn't bother our neck, we're going to use that downward compression engagement to bring the chest towards the thighs. Mwah, mwah. Kiss your good knees, even if it's an air kiss inhaling releasing so as we do a few more of these really try to let breath initiate motion asking is there more is there more is there more and find the pause and the next part of the breath Remember, please, that in general, we're trying to breathe through our nose only. But you may need to sigh once in a while. <laughs> that can be great. And you also, if you're stuffy, you may need to just sort of use the mouth lightly open to enhance what you're already getting through the nose. All right, last time. And release, plant the feet for bridge pose. So I like to work my shoulder heads a little beneath me so that I'm creating a valley down between the shoulder blades and that protects the cervical spine. You can also lift the chin a little up and back instead of having it towards the throat. Although it's interesting, having the chin tucked to the throat is a helpful technique for igniting the thyroid activity. So it's very helpful for the thyroid. Um, but staying in that position can really pull awkwardly on people's necks. So if you do decide to do that, um, just do it for a moment when you're in your upward part of bridge. So as you're ready, powering up through the pelvis and then inhaling, descending. We're going to do this a few times. I'm going to add a very active powering down through the upper arm. And this is wonderful because it's already getting into my upper back and really waking up those muscles, strengthening them, but also helping release any stored tension. Imagining that there's a block or something to squeeze between the inner thighs so that the legs aren't lazying outward. And you can kind of check in with that by just noticing, do you really feel deep engagement down through the inner foot? If not, you probably have given over a little bit to that outward thing, even if it's not super visually obvious. So again, checking your body. Good. One more time, invitation to hold in bridge. And if you're doing that and feel comfortable doing so, adding your yoga mudra can be wonderful. And if you're doing that, again, you're powering the arms into a straight position. So you're pressing your pinkies towards the floor, your fists towards your heels. And that makes for a really, again, incredible stretch here for a brief moment, maybe chin to chest, deep breath. And then please come slowly, slowly down. And when you are ready to join me in movement, I'm going to just spinal rock up to cross-legged and actually come forward onto my belly. So in this first part of the position on my belly, I'm preparing actually for cobra pumping. Um, I want to ignite that anchoring through the pelvic triangle, pubic bone and hip bones, and also a little bit the thigh bones. And then I want to feel elongated right through the crown. And so I don't want to start off on my chin unless you simply can't be on your forehead. If you've got glasses, I know you might need to take them off. But I want to retain that sense of reaching through here, even when we come up with our chest and cobra a little bit. So I'm going to ask you to first Anchor your elbows in, shoulder heads down, then plant the elbows or the palms. Intelligent hands, fingers spread wide. And instead of coming up as high as you can right away, I want to ask you to do this with me in really nice little slow movements, breath initiating motion. So pelvis anchoring firmly, inhaling, extend just a little bit 
off the floor with the forehead and feel again that engagement downward of the shoulder heads and elbows in. Exhale, return. And as we continue, inhale, you might come a little higher, but there's still that drawing down of the shoulder heads and drawing the heart forward towards the front of the mat. Again, soft gaze, light connection to the tip of the tongue. And if you'd like to come into kind of a king cobra where you're actually using the pressure of the arms, go for it. But if you're experiencing any kind of wing or shrug, please come back down, find integrity again, and come up. And that means you're also not giving up your hips. They are anchored downward. So we're making a beautiful curve with our heart forward. Let's do one more. And if you like, briefly reach your chin up and release. Turn your head to one side, let the arms go wherever feels good. <sighs> We're gonna come into jet airplane. So same basic starting position as our Cobra, except that now the hands are behind us, fingertips tented. But that same still engagement of upper arms, elbows in, shoulder heads down, nice long neck. And it's important when I'm engaging the pelvis that I'm not just squeezing the butt cheeks, but I'm engaging the pubic bone down because that's going to give me that lower abdomen support that we were just working on in, um, in our seed pose. I don't want to have an arch in my back. As you're ready, inhaling, extending through the spine a little bit again. Maybe don't come as high as you can initially. And just focus on the muscular and neural awareness, squeezing shoulder blades down and a little in. And exhaling, returning again. I initially always keep my legs rooted so that, number one, I can just focus on that upper and mid-back, which is really the, the gift of jet airplane is strengthening that area. But also then I can notice when I do go to add legs, is it a good addition or does it just create a band of tension kind of gripping, in which case I don't add legs. Good. If you've got a couple more in, you join me in extending and then sweeping one arm forward. So it's a counter reach. And the other. And we'll press back to child's pose. No wings, no shrugs, butt cheeks squeezed. And press back. Ah. I like taking my knees a little out at an angle so there's room for the abdomen, the hips. And the arms, of course, can be anywhere. Sometimes people like them alongside the legs or even in between the legs. I usually only add that if I'm going to be there for a while and also if my neck doesn't mind. So I'm going to invite you to just come right back into your breath awareness there. Inhaling. Find the gap. Notice the rising of the body, kind of the lifting as you inhale and then Ah, the exhaling settling that happens. It's really quite beautiful, this wave pattern, this lifting and settling that happens in our bodies. And it's interesting. It's happening all the time um, if we're allowing our body to really receive breath. And it's just a wonderful, very relaxing movement. Those of us who appreciate the movement of, you know, gently lapping waves and water and so on, recognize that same kind of natural and genius movement in your body. I'm now going to take my arms out in a wide V, I guess, and I'm just going to kind of stretch one way and the other. I'm kind of pressing one shoulder armpit towards the floor and then the other. <sighs> And you can play with your angles. So you can take the arms out then a little wider and play with that. Uh, and then I'm going to bring my arms back in nice and straight ahead. 
Go ahead and tense the fingertips. And as you press back through your butt towards your heels, kind of spider walk your fingertips forward. The palms are way off the floor. And if you can get them, the forearms are too. So I'm trying to wiggle as much space between my butt and my hands. Breathe here. If this is bothersome to have the hands directly parallel to one another, then bring the arms out a little wider. Deep breath. It's kind of a nice stretch and activation all at once. And release. Good. We're going to come into a version of thread the needle here. So you're going to kind of lift up to take one arm down and through. And if this doesn't feel good, you could do a standing version. You just cross one arm in front and kind of hold it, draw it towards the chest. But one of the things that I really enjoy here is kind of just a, you probably can't see it in my body very well, but I'm just rotating a little in and out of the pose. And then coming up, and I can see that we've got a, a nice uh, rain that might be coming. So if I just got a little bit darker, <laughs> you know why, it's not your screen. <laughs> Been so enjoying all of the springtime waters that are bringing all this green. It's really quite magical. So as you're feeling this stretch, can you find how breath can massage those tight areas around the shoulder blade, the upper back? And when you're ready, come on out. Good. Go ahead and please tuck your tailbone to come on out of that position. And we'll just come into a quick little cow cat here. Love that spine up, inhaling cow pose. And there's nothing wrong with briefly occasionally reaching forward and up through the chin, exhaling cat. I'm just trying to remind us that in general, our go-to should be just a nice long neutral spine and then only an occasional reach. I'm going to bring us into classic pigeon today. And of course, by now you're familiar with reclined pigeon. And for some of you, that's always going to be your version because classic pigeon, your knees or something do not appreciate it. Or if you've got a lot of instability in your SI joints, we're going to come in by, I'm just going to kind of set my left foot back to give me space to bring my right knee forward behind my right wrist. And we always want to be in our core as we're transitioning into these poses so that if all of a sudden the knee is unhappy, I can come right out, right? I don't give my weight to it. So first, just coming into your pigeon, come on down. And today I'm going to be offering later a, a tractioning in this pose that is pretty wonderful for strengthening parts of our, our glutes and um, some of the stability in our pelvis. And um, so it's kind of a nice compliment to some of the butt and hip strengthening we've been doing in the last couple of weeks. So once you feel pretty good and all the joints and all that, I'm gonna ask you to come up on your hands, but with the elbows still bent. So again, I'm not cranking my spine. I'm still finding that nice curve of the heart drawing forward, elbows back and in, shoulder heads down. And now I'm gonna curl my back foot under and first, just playing with that is its own experiment. What is it like for you to activate that back thigh muscle, boom, so that that back leg truly is straight and not kind of just half bent? All right, so get that there. And you should feel big ignition then in the butt cheek of that extending leg, in this case, the left. And then I'm going to squeeze with my right leg here as if I'm trying to shorten the length of the mat. And that brings me up. It kind of that squeezing raises me up a little bit. And from that position, I'm gonna see if I can basically do a little kind of jet airplane. Breathing. Scanning the body. If you're feeling inappropriate tension, your back hurts, your neck hurts, something come out. If you're just feeling really good work in that right glute and that left thigh, that upper back, awesome. Taking one more. And coming slowly on down. Whew. I'm also feeling it in the hamstring on that right leg, which is great because mine are tight, but they actually also need more of this shortening work. When you are ready to come out, take your time. I like taking my back foot and kind of bringing the knee forward a little so that I can just gently unwind that leg. But if you're 
kind of hungry to jump into downward dog or something, go for it. All right. And I'm going to come forward onto my other side, left knee coming behind the left wrist. And I'm trying to scooch that back foot so that it really is kind of behind my back hip and not out to the side um, so that my hip bones can shine forward. And that's one of the kind of main alignments of classic pigeon, at least done this way, is hip bones forward. And coming on down for a few breaths, just settling, saying hello to all that's available here in this pose. Inhaling gap and exhaling gap. And when you are ready, if you are ready to add traction, again, remember your job is to edit the practice. So I offer all kinds of stuff, what's right for you. Finding that beautiful engaged upper body that supports you and then adding the back leg, thigh bone pressing towards the sky. And now I'm experimenting with tractioning and what I can feel before I even begin to lift my hands off is this side is different, that I'm feeling a lot more intense sensation in this left side. And that's not surprising to me uh, because, in fact, when I started doing this about a year and a half ago, I couldn't actually come off the floor on this side. So now see if you can come into your jet airplane with your hands. And if you can't or can, notice if you have any differences between the sides. And again, traction, squeeze, breathe, squeeze those shoulder blades. And when you are ready, slowly, slowly on out. Good. Let's, again, release that left leg however you'd like. And, oh, give it some love there. Nice. And we're going to come up to some standing work. Um, I'm just going to come into rag doll first at the back of my mat because it feels so good after all that hamstring glute work. <sighs> if you're there, just take some time to sway. And you'll feel how the stretch wraps around uh, the various parts of the leg then as you move a little side to side. You can even very actively sweep and rotate. And then in your own time, come on up. <sighs> Pause, check in with your breath, your own good divine heart and self. If you are dealing with any parts of your body that are in challenge, you know, pain or just not functioning the way you'd want, I would remind you to be in a state of noticing of how you see your body, how you talk to it. And uh, if it feels like you're just pretty darn frustrated, make sure that you counteract that with a healthy dose of appreciation um, and compassion. Your body is amazing. It's healing on your behalf and really trying to give you good feedback about what's appropriate and not. So turning sideways on your mat, we're going to do, um, I think of it as kind of a standing seed flow. And so it's going to be coming down tight into a little ball, stretching up big, and if appropriate in your body at that top end, adding almost a kind of a, a jet airplane engagement, except I'll have my arms up, um, but to find that shortening of the posterior chain or the back body that creates so much good balance. So first, I'm just going to inhale up, ah, get a nice breath in, exhale, come on down and get tight a moment. Ah, squeeze, 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 little seed. On the inhale, sweep up. Again, feel free to add the butt squeeze and exhaling. <sighs> Become a nice tight little ball. Maybe you can even bring your butt all the way down towards the calves. Don't worry if you can't. Inhaling, sweep up. And remember, if you're lifting your head a bunch and you're feeling tension, get into the habit of keeping that neck neutral. Good. One more. Is there more emptying, emptying? And come on up. We're going to move those legs out wider. And we're going to do kind of a, a seed version here, just that nice flow of going down and coming up. I also um, have often thought of this as like an energy gathering and bringing up seeds and energy. 
and taking them up so we can think about a tree growing. We're doing tree pose later. So as you're ready, inhale, sweep up, however you like, right? This is your dance. Let your body tell you. Is there more? Are you using your core to empty out all that exhale, compression? Last one like this, we'll all meet hanging downwards and we're gonna go into our straddles. We know this is just plain old good for us. So of course, as always, notice where you need to be in terms of height. You could have your hands on your thighs instead of the floor, but also width or depth, how far apart can your feet be? It's really important that my knees are not trying to go past my ankle or that foot's gonna be cranked out onto the blade. I should feel just super sturdy as I go side to side notice what's there at some point you might hold to one side then breathing and you hold to the other and sometimes when I'm here I really like to add a twist I'll bring my one hand up on my thigh to kind of support that and releasing go ahead and bring those feet on in so that you can comfortably safely come on up notice what you're feeling this would be a lovely chance to scan the body and notice if anything's shifted since you started your practice in your body sensation or even just your level of connection to your body are you more in it the texture of your breath access to deeper fuller breath so far i hope we'll be doing more to support that okay so we're going to be coming into some breath locks and um, i like to do it seated um, but I also know if it's kind of your first time experimenting with breath locks or you haven't done it very often, that it might be helpful to do it laying down initially. Um, but basically, as I'm talking here, you know, if you're going to have something to be seated on, take time to, to get settled. Um, but basically, breath locks are simply a holding out and then a holding in. And we're not trying to struggle to like, it's a contest and hold it as long as I possibly can. We are actually trying to soften around the holding. We're actually investigating how many ways can I melt and expand outward to allow the holding to happen with grace. And then as soon as we notice that we've passed that point where we can do it with grace, we're starting to contract, then we release. Okay, so that's really, really key. So getting comfortable wherever you are, if it's laying down or seated. If it's seated, again, the importance of being able to have the knees straight forward at the hips. Remember, you could be just on an ottoman or a couch or edge of a kitchen chair or what have you. But that I want my spine to be easily upright. If I feel like I'm having to hold on and I'm bowed back, um, my breath space that I'm really working so hard with right now is actually then going to be compressed and contracted. So. Um, the most important thing would be this openness of breath space. If you want to be laying down or even standing to achieve that, then please go for it. Okay, as you're ready, please close your eyes, turn the gaze up and in. And with all of the aliveness of your body that you've cultivated through some of our stretches and movements, begin to just notice breath rising and settling, feeling fabric moving on your skin. And you might even be able to notice the subtlety of how the body is moving in response to the breath, right? The gentle shifts in spinal fluctuation and so on. So 
so enjoying a nice expansive inhale. And then on your next exhale, empty. It's not a compression breath. It's just a regular emptying and hold out external breath lock. Ideally, you'd have just the tip of the tongue connected, the rest of the tongue and jaw soft. And feel kind of a, a spaciousness in your face, like you're inviting warm sunshine to kiss your face. And as you observe the building sensations of the breath lock, notice if other parts of you are tightening, face muscles, scalp, whatever, lung space, ask, can I soften around this? When you lose your ability to hold or soften with grace, relax, allow, then the inhale to flow in and hold in, internal breath lock, internal kumbhaka. A reminder, if you're seated, to really maintain that root and reach through the spine, totally soft through the neck, and again, begin to notice the sensations or the pressures of the breath lock. Asking, is there more or can I soften around this? You can be kind of scanning the body for places that are contracting, inviting them to soften. And when appropriate, you'll let the breath lock go. And you can always take a neutral breath or two in between, or you can come right into breath locks um, again. And it can be kind of a, a fun game um, if you want to, to practice kind of counting and see if you might be able to extend your capacity. So that's something to play with um, if it's not too much of a, a distraction from the body itself and it doesn't put you into kind of a gripping trying to hold so that you can get, you know, two more counts in. But that sometimes is, is useful and, and fun. So for now, please join me in just a couple more rounds, gathering a nice long inhale. Exhale, empty, and hold out. Being aware of your heartbeat, listening inward. Inviting a soft melting through the base of the skull, neck, jaw area. Inviting the lungs to relax because you recognize, of course, that you can breathe anytime that you want. Right? So you are safe. You don't have to be afraid of not getting breath. And then when appropriate, inhale and hold in. Internal breath lock. And as you're holding in and doing all that work with softening, just note too that the sensations of the internal breath lock are different than the external breath lock. In internal breath lock, we're being expanded. So the pressure is the expansion of our own breath being warmed by the body. And the holding out pressure or tensions, if you will, is that there's that vacuum and that our body's growing desire for oxygen and breath is the demand. So let's do one more round, just being in awareness of that. When you're ready, you'll exhale holding out and then inhale, holding in. Again, this is to your timing, different than anyone else's or different than mine, and different perhaps um, today than it will be tomorrow. Let's get to know the sensation of external kumbhaka, that vacuum. What does that feel like physically? And even emotionally. Some people say that they have a certain amount of stress or anxiousness during breath locks, but it's often just during one or the other, and it's different for different people. So I find that really, really interesting and kind of exciting that there's so much for us to notice. So as you're ready, of course, you'll have moved to your internal breath lock and noticing the sensations of that. And if you've already released, please be in a state of observing, kind of reflecting what are those breath locks like for you physically, emotionally. All right, and we're going to come off of our seated position, although we will be returning to it um, in just a little bit for our um, 
Nadi Shodhana practice, the alternate nostril breathing that I was recommending the Olbas oil is really lovely for. For now, I'm going to ask you to bring this spaciousness, if you will, this relationship with breath that is curious and patient. And I want to bring that into a sun salutation. Um, now, hopefully you've been kind of tracking along with me in recent weeks because I've been breaking down sun salutation. But if not, you could also simply watch. Um, we're going to be doing two rounds. And um, each round, if you will, each sun salutation has two halves, a right lead leg and left lead leg. Um, and so we'll be doing two of those. And the first one is going to be really slow. I'm just going to add a bunch of kind of pausing, breathing, checking um, your alignments. And then the second round will be more like one movement, one action of breath, inhale, exhale. Um, obviously, you don't have to do it at any particular space. And the most important thing is being in breath and being in physical alignment. There's no point in winging ourselves through anything with the shrugging and the, you know, gripping of the jaw or what have you. So, um, again, do this at your level, your pace, your preference. <clears throat> but we're going to come up to the front of the mat. And actually, before we come into our sun salutations, I want to just refined that posterior chain intelligence that I was referencing, right? So by engaging the shoulder heads down and back and kind of pushing the earth away, I'm not adding a back bend. I've got my hips still right above my feet, but I'm squeezing the glutes forward and I'm keeping my chin neutral as I do this. So again, this would be from the side. And what you should feel is a lot of activation up that back body, really from the heel up into the, the kind of upper back. And that's some of the power that we want when we are in plank, when we are in chaturanga, upward dog cobra, um, really everything except downward dog. Even there, there's some activation, but it's not that shortening of the muscles. And then each time we return to our mountain, making sure that we aren't kind of high, I'm in mountain, <laughs> but more that I'm like, boom that same activation, okay? So mountain pose, feet about hip width apart, big toes anchored, other toes spreading. And ideally, um, I find my preferred arm position. So you might start with jet airplane always and return to this or just arms down, but activated. I'm calling it jet airplane for short, so you kind of know what I mean. We can also be having our starting and closing position be prayer pose, our Anjali Mudra, and then we begin again. So it's, it's really up to you. And again, some of us in upward position might be bringing the hands together and raising our chin to gaze at them. Or it might be the arms out in a wide V or even out if we find that there's any aggravation in shoulders and so on. So hopefully by now with our practice, you're aware of what's going on in your body today and you can join me in taking good care of yours. All right, as you're ready, find your starting stance mountain pose, and ignite three very willful breaths, finding breath into the rib cage, into the abdomen, checking that your neck, tongue are staying soft. It's very similar to breath locks. There's a certain amount of action or things, sensation, and a certain amount of places that we just soften. On your next inhale, root and rise, your version. Exhaling, ragdoll, swan dive forward and hang. On an inhale, when it comes, and again, I'm doing this in a much slower fashion, bring the hands up to the shin bones and extend. Is there more? And then exhaling, step back right leg only into your lunch. I would like you to pause here. You can do a little bit of pulsing if that would feel good. But pausing, getting nice and long, taking a big inhale. Exhaling, step back, downward facing dog. We're going to pause here and find our best dog. Nice engaged hands, pedaling feet, whatever you got to do. <sighs> Setting your drishti gaze between the feet. And we'll be coming into the dog series portion of sun salutation. So again, feel free to watch if that's still unfamiliar to you. Otherwise, find your version of plank. Knees down is always a great idea for your first cycle, for sure. Exhaling. 
chaturanga bend the elbows and it might just be a little bit remember maybe you come all the way to the floor cobra anchor the pelvis you might take a couple of breaths there and exhaling press back downward facing dog via the knees for greater ease otherwise you can make it more powerful and you'll see me progress as we go settle into dog get nicely into your core to then inhale bring your right foot forward into your low lunge grab it if you need to until that heel is directly under the knee big lengthening of the spine as the shoulders draw down and back and then exhaling return to your fold rag doll inhaling root and rise exhaling resolve perhaps prayer hands perhaps the arms down let's take a neutral breath there and just witness did you take on neck tension wrist tension etc did you bring strong abiding breath into your flow we'll do this again now with the left leg as the lead leg inhaling root and rise is there more exhaling fold nice strong belly <sighs> emptying 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 inhaling extending hands on the fronts of the shins and exhaling stepping back left leg only and pause so i like to again add some breaths here initially so we get really in our body nicely activating through that back thigh that we woke up during our pigeon and tractioning pose and when you feel ready from core strength hiya step back downward facing dog again we're going to hang out and dog a couple of breaths really working to straighten those arms and elongate that line all the way through the tailbone neck and head are easy and when you're ready inhaling to your plank pose belly to spine thigh bones to the sky if you're doing full plank exhaling chaturanga letting the chest precede the hips either cobra on the floor or if you'd like you might be an upward dog you can do this remember on the tops of the feet like so or on the balls of the feet this tends to give a little more lower back uh, support because it's easier for people to contract the thighs there and press back downward facing dog you might inhale exhale sigh because it feels good <laughs> and strong core get that left foot forward pause elongate and if we don't do that, I find people kind of stay all crunched up, waiting for the next move. So we want to elongate, exhaling forward fold. And that'll be your challenge in the next flow where I don't pause in lunge or pause in dog for multiple breaths. Inhale, root and rise. Is that there's a tendency to never uh, elongate because you're waiting for the next movement. And one of the great challenges here is to be in each breath in each pose for that moment fully asking is there more take a moment again notice if anything needs release loving up and when you are ready please join me again for a full round of sun salutation light connection to the tip of the tongue rooting and reaching nice strong core inhaling root and rise is there more exhaling fold inhaling extend halfway is there more shoulders drawing down exhaling step back right leg only inhaling extending exhaling step back downward facing dog inhaling to your plank knees or feet is there more exhaling hips rise a little chest proceeds chaturanga inhaling either upward facing dog or cobra and exhaling downward facing dog inhaling left foot flows forward elongate exhaling forward fold commit empty 
Inhaling, root and rise. Exhaling, prayer hands. Nice long breath, witness. And other side, inhale, sweep up. Exhaling, fold. Inhaling, extend. Maybe you're loose so you can keep your hands on the floor. Exhaling, step back, left leg only. Inhaling, elongate here. And exhaling, step back, downward facing dog. Drishti gaze. Inhaling to your plank. Last one. You've got it. Make it strong or adjust it until you can. Exhaling, chaturanga. Empty, empty, empty. Inhaling, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhaling, downward facing dog. Nice, long, strong spine. Inhaling, left foot steps forward. Elongate. And exhaling, forward fold. Inhaling, root and rise. And exhaling, prayer hands. Know that in addition to the obvious effects like your heart rate and so on, that you've been pumping each of your organs with fresh blood, um, that it, you've done a lot of detoxing. So in fact, remember to drink fluids, very, very important. Um, but it's one of the great gifts of yoga is that it's not just, you know, an exercise that strengthens this muscle or whatever, loosens up this thing and that thing but that there is such an incredible massage and revitalization of all of our glands and organs. And um, so it's, it's one of the things that I love about the practice. We are um, going to come into, actually I want to do, that's right, I want to do tree pose before we do Nadi Shodhana. So I got all excited seeing my old boss oil. All right, tree pose. Ideally, try beginning with big toes touching and the other toes spreading. Now, I know that some people, um, <laughs> they groan when I bust out a balancing pose. Other people love it. And so I would suggest ahead um, to those of you that love it, uh, notice if it's a sense of perfectionism and it's easy for you, in which case I'd love for you to make it a little harder um, at some point closing your eyes or whatever you got to do. Those of you that sort of groan or resist it, Again, notice if it's your perfectionism <laughs> so that it's hard and you don't like to do things that aren't, you aren't good at. Um, obviously, balance is something that some people are more natural at. But really, most people, what we don't tend to realize is how much of the balance isn't really about, like, I have good balance or not balance. It's waking up the muscles that really allow us to be stable. And so as you're placing your feet in this kind of half moon position, we consider it, I want you to think about squeezing your thighs together and then using that to push into the earth. And for right now, just hyper squeeze them, like ridiculous squeeze, not like you'd ever want to hold the pose this way, but more like you've got a piece of paper between your thighs and you want to make sure like no one can take it away from you. <laughs> it's, it's a really valuable poem or a big money a big high bill, what would it take, right? Just hold on to that squeeze and then relax. And so notice when you do that, what muscles are being activated. For me, I can feel my glutes. I can feel very much my inner thighs. And even in this squeezing position, I can very intentionally add pelvic floor. And so that's a big part of our core strength and our stability. Um, so it's not just am I natural or not natural at balance or I've got a good foot and a bad foot, okay? So as you come take one foot into kickstand now, notice if you cocked your hips or you lose that inner thigh activity and now imagine something else there, a ball or something that you're trying to squeeze. So you're keeping that tree trunk and you might lightly place hand to hand and maybe bring the foot up to the calf. And by now, hopefully, you've got a little proprioception going on in that foot. It's trying to figure out how to hold you, how to navigate the earth. Really fun is practicing this on kind of unstable surfaces like sand or a pillow. Or again, closing your eyes. Please find your limbs. And I'm going to ask you to commit to breath that is very peaceful and gentle. So... However you have to do that, in spite of the balance challenges, make breath the priority. 
inhaling gap, exhaling gap. So we're training ourselves to have the dichotomy in the body, if you will, of deep engagement and effort in the muscles that are designed to hold us. And then a soft, peaceful breath that says, I am well, I am whole. There's nothing to know, do, or accomplish. It's like a sigh. It's a wonderful message to our nervous system. And so again, if this is just stable and easy for you, please close your eyes. Let things get a little more wiggly. Breath rising and settling. See if you can find one more. And come on out. Might want to love up that standing foot and thigh. Again, you can feel how much work the foot tends to do to grip. In fact, you'll want to check yours that you aren't kind of curling the toes under because actually the more that they're pressing and spreading, uh, the more they'll help our balance, right? It's a wider uh, bed of, of stability. So as you come into your other side, do check that. What is your standing foot doing? Is it curling and gripping or expanding, rooting, spreading? And again, you can always find your own starting position, whether it's arms down in that kind of jet airplane or prayer hands. Sometimes I like having prayer hands a little out here so I can step my drishti gaze kind of across the tips of the middle fingers and coming slowly up perhaps with the foot to the calf. Add your yoga toes flaring out. That actually helps because then you know where that other foot is touching the calf. Squeeze that standing thigh back towards the center line. Again, as if squeezing a ball or remembering that piece of paper or whatever. Ujjayi breath, slow, deep and wide. Maybe even a soft smile, soft tongue. You might close the eyes for greater challenge. Finding abiding breath. Making sure that all the power and control mechanisms are coming from the kind of thighs, butt, and belly, and that everything else feels completely safe and supported. Finding the gap, a couple more. And when you are ready, release the guy. Go ahead and shake those guys out. Lovely. All right, now I'm gonna be coming into my Nadi Shodhana. Um, it's sometimes helpful to grab a Kleenex and just do a little <laughs> to see if there's anything in there. You can also keep it handy in case you come across something or uh, you end up sneezing. <laughs> so if you're using the Olbas oil, um, the way I would use it, again, you can just put it all in your chest and so on, and you only need a couple drops. Or you could just take and put like one or two drops into your palm. Um, oops, I kind of got a little more than I intended to. Um, and then what you're doing is you're allowing those vapors of, from that hand to come up into the, the sinuses. I put it into my right palm because I'm going to be using my right hand for Nadi Shodhana. And so the hand position that you're trying to find, it looks a little bit like a Star Trek show, <laughs> is that you are wanting your middle and index finger together. And it, you, can, you don't have to keep your pinky and ring finger together, but obviously just try. Um, and your thumb is separate. And so what we're doing is keeping these guys out of the way, these middle, ring and or middle and index finger, so that I can alternatingly, alternate nostril breathing, alternatingly close one nostril and then the other. And so this is just the, the traditional way that it's done. Actually, traditionally, you would place the middle and index finger kind of on the forehead between the eyebrows and that that would be a settling point for them. I don't like that. It always feels like it builds weird tension in my, in my body and I don't like it. So I don't do it that way. But I do find that this is useful rather than just like kind of pinching with two fingers. It's a, it's a very steady, you don't have to think about what your hand is doing, especially if you've done this a few times, right? So if you are comfortable 
uh, as you are, great. If not, please remember to refine that breath space. And so the couple of keys with our Nadi Shodhana is that we have to be patient, especially if we are stuffy, and this will bring you into awareness as to whether one side is stuffy or not. We often don't know. Um, but, uh, and so to not rush the breath and just be patient. And if you are really stuffy, you can keep the mouth a little open so that you're also sipping a little breath through there, or just don't completely close down the nostril. That's another option. Okay. But what we're going to do is be breathing up one side and out the other, and then we'll pause and breathe up that same side and out the other. So it's a kind of up and back and we're only switching the hand in order to exhale. This will make sense as we do it. So if you would, please go ahead and close your right nostril and close your eyes unless you're needing to watch me. As you inhale up the left nostril, asking, is there more, giving it as much time as it needs. Then in order to exhale, switch so that you're now closing the left nostril with your fingers. And the breath is flowing out that right nostril. Hold your hand as it is to inhale. So now you're inhaling up the right nostril. And in order to exhale, you flip so that you are exhaling out the left. So again, you only move your hand in order to exhale. Hold the hand here, inhaling up the left. And in order to exhale, switch. Maintain your hand, inhaling. And in order to exhale, switch. So I hope you get the idea and you'll continue to do it at your breath timing because again, you may be dealing with some resistance in one or both nostrils. And let's do a few more just like this. See if you can respect the gap or pause between the turns of the breath. Couple more rounds. Witnessing again any kind of feelings or thoughts you have, like impatience or trying to rush the breath past the closures or resistance, or perhaps just the mind wandering off onto random topics and bringing it back. And we're going to do one more round. And we began by inhaling through the left nostril. I'm going to ask you to end by exhaling through the left nostril. And when your cycle is complete, just release the hands and notice what it's like to breathe through both nostrils. And you might further focus on the breath by observing if there's a difference in temperature between the breath on the inhale or exhale as it passes over the upper lip. So you can see Nadi Shodhana itself is not only a wonderful pranayama or breath exercise, it can be a wonderful meditation, um, a place and a way to focus your attention on breath. Um, Obviously, during rig classic meditation, kind of the, the most basic way is just to watch breath come and go, rise and settle, and that's lovely. Um, but I know some people really appreciate having these extra tools, whether it's counting their inhale or exhale, or Nadi Shodhana can be quite wonderful. And it's been shown to actually help uh, balance out activity in the two hemispheres of the brain. So it's really a lovely uh, way to just become kind of more whole, more connected. And that is the practice of yoga. We're practicing wholeness, union. So inviting you to um, find these last couple of things that I hope will make us feel whole and balanced. Um, I'm going to reach now for my support for under the bra strap. Um, I'm using this nice little rolled up blanket. 
but you might choose to to use a block um, if you want something taller and so on the goal here is to find a, a deep state of, of ease so we shouldn't be kind of like okay when's this gonna end so I want it kind of settled around the bra strap area and if you're using a rolled up blanket or something it's obviously going to be less precise than the block so you just have to kind of wiggle around till you find what I want you to have is a sense of uplift in the kind of area just below the uh, shoulder blade wingtips so that the shoulder heads can kind of melt down and back over. Um, what I don't want is it kind of under the shoulder heads. Um, that's not what we're looking for. So part of the gift of this posture is that it takes all of those back muscles, which we've been strengthening and engaging, yes, and it invites them to relax. And then, then it brings all the breath space into its most open. This is also a great place to relax the neck, breathe. And if you'd like to do that wonderful shoulder exercise, you're reaching one arm up to the sky and then behind, and then keeping deeply activated straight through the arm, reaching through middle finger, kind of pulsing that arm in and out away from the armpit or the ear rather and releasing, exploring the other side. And again, being deeply inward and curious, what's going on in there? Is one area challenged, more open, is one side different? Uh, when you do come off your object of support, please roll a little to one side so you're not lifting the head directly up and tightening those neck muscles. And then lastly, if you'd like, join me with the block under the sacral triangle. Um, it's been so fun over the years to hear from people that they, many people use this like daily <laughs> as a way to balance out their body, especially if they're doing a lot of gardening or firewood cutting, vacuuming, you know, any number of things that can really tighten up the, the low back and make us feel like, oh God, I'm not going to be comfortable tonight. So this is one way to create balance. Notice that the block, again, is not in my lower back vertebrae area. It's not in the arch. What this block is actually doing is almost helping traction a little bit on the pelvis. It's as if someone was coming along and helping press my hips and pelvis away from the skull. And if you feel anything but kind of good release, you come off right away or you make it less intense potentially by bending the knees. And when you feel complete, come on off. And your option to just settle into a good corpse pose, kind of working those shoulder heads beneath you. Or you might choose to come on into a seated uh, meditation. Um, it's really quite fun to notice that even um, a few minutes of meditation, like three, and that's actually where I usually recommend people start as a low-end commitment of three minutes. But how we get better at it, we get entrained in it, um, and how it really helps to shift us. Um, we've, we know from all the studies that have been done um, that meditation really increases resiliency. Um, and I like to think of it also as creating space, mental uh, space, emotional space. It's sort of how the breath creates space in us in a way that no amount of manipulating or choosing to have it happen can. The breath like magically comes in and creates a spaciousness um, in our internal landscape. And I feel like meditation does that for us in our mental, emotional landscape in a way that's hard to understand and witness. Um, but again, we're fortunate that we have a lot of uh, science behind it now that helps us know that even though we just feel like we just sat here maybe for three minutes being mentally busy and may not gaining anything, we know that that's not actually the case. We did gain something even if we were mentally busy, but it's the willingness, the tapas or resolve to come again and again and again to that, say, three-minute meditation. So if you would like to join me in that, then I encourage you to just have your attention on breath. Um, if you want to count it, you can. 
uh, however you'd like to witness it, the sensations that it creates in your body. If you're doing just a corpse pose Shavasana, then you're letting go of any breath control and you can just let your mind kind of settle on the breath and then deepen into your yogic sleep. All right, we're gonna be here for just a, a few minutes today about that three minute range that I'm referencing. Um, and then I'll be closing with the bowl. But if you wanna continue, please do take advantage if you're feeling in that kind of quiet, settled space where you just want it to go on and on. Thank you so much for coming to the mat with me today. I'm really grateful. Turning your gaze up and in and tuning in. Noticing breath rising and settling in the body and letting go of any control, any effort. Settling into this moment, this body, this breath. Notice if your mind has wandered off on an adventure and bring it back to this moment, this body, this breath. And if you are ready to conclude your Shavasana or meditation, you might once again become very cognizant of the breath and begin to notice what your body might like. If it's rolling wrists, moving the head, gathering yourself up into a little ball if you're on your back, if you're seated. I often like going, oh, kind of yawning like you're waking up for the first time today. Ah. <sighs> And I'll be closing our practice with our ohms and the singing bowl. Very happy to have you join me or to just be in your own quiet space if you'd like. If you'd like to join me, please, inhaling. Uh.
Om Shanti Shanti. Om Peace Peace. Namaste.